Oh, we got a good one for you today, the orbital overlap diagram for ethene C2H4. Now, you may already know that the ene part of this name gives it a double bond between the two carbons, but let's say you didn't know that. Carbon being in group 14 of the periodic table brings four valence electrons with it, and there are two of them. So that's eight valence electrons total. Hydrogen in group one brings one valence electron with it. So that means we have four ones also being brought. That means we have 12 electrons total to distribute around the Lewis structure. Carbon will need to be bonded to carbon at least once, and each of those carbons need to be bonded to a hydrogen. Now, one, two, three, four, five single bonds has already accounted for 10 electrons total, and we only have 12 to distribute. We need to complete the octet on both this carbon and that carbon, so it's a double bond. Now we'll get to the orbital overlap. Let's talk for a moment about what this double bond means. The first bond between any two atoms is a sigma bond, and then the second and, if it's their third bond between the two, are made of pi bonds. That's significant because you need to know how many pi bonds are made to figure out what the hybridization on each carbon atom is. Let me draw you the electron configuration diagram for unhybridized carbon. Now there is a 1s subshell with two electrons in it, but the valence shell of carbon has 2s2, 2p2. Does this ring a bell? The p subshell has three orbitals in it, and carbon bringing six electrons total, or four in its valence shell, has two in its 2s and two in its 2p. We need to explain how carbon can make three sigma bonds and one pi bond. Here's how you do that. Pi bonds require unhybridized p orbitals. So one of these, because we need one pi bond for each carbon. One pi bond requires one of the two p orbitals to be left over. And the rest of these orbitals will hybridize together. So the 2s one of the two p's and another one of the two p's will combine to make what we call sp2 hybridized orbitals. Get it? An s and two of the p's, sp2. We're making three of those orbitals. I'm trying to put those at a height in between the s's and the p's because they're combining to make three new orbitals that, that are like a some kind of combination of these three here. The 1s never got touched, so I'll just leave it there. And additionally, you need to spread your one, two, three, four valence electrons around the orbitals like this. I know I'm violating, I think it's the Aufbau principle here, but it just it's what happens for hybridization. Great. The point is that each of these carbons have three sp2 hybrid orbitals and a leftover 2p. Let me get to drawing that for you. The carbon atom has three sp2 hybrid orbitals. sp2s are arranged in a trigonal planar way. What I want you to do is draw one out to the right then I want you to draw one that looks like it's at like a 120, 150 degree angle away. It's actually coming out of the page at you. And I want you to draw another one that looks like it's going back into the page. So this is the hydrogen and hydrogen, one pointing towards you and one pointing away from you. These are all sp2 hybrid orbitals. The other carbon has the same thing, but it's mirrored. A hydrogen there, a hydrogen coming out at you here. There we go. These are the two carbons. And this overlap between the sp2 orbitals is the sigma bond. Now, while we're here, I'm going to draw myself the H's with their 1s. Hydrogens don't hybridize. You just draw them as circles. 
they only ever have a 1s orbital. There you go. But what your teacher wants to see is that you know how the 2p orbital is arranged. I'm going to do this in a separate color for you. A leftover 2p orbital is shaped kind of, I call it a peanut, even though that's not what p stands for. Half of that 2p orbital is pointing straight up, and the other half is pointing straight down. Now for the hybrid orbitals, there was one, two, three for the one, two, three orbitals, but for a 2p, you have to draw half of it above and half of it below. It's just the way that it goes. The other carbon also has an sp2, so draw it above and below. The sideways overlap of these leftover 2p's is what's forming the pi bond. And even more confusingly, you, I want you to draw a line here to show the sideways overlap of these two halves and another one here to show the sideways overlap of these two. These two lines combine to form a single pi bond. You can think about the electrons circulating in here, like going around in a circle, and you need both of these to complete the circuit. That's not how electrons move, but you can think about it that way. And what matters to me here is that you know that there is a sigma bond here from the end-to-end -end overlap of hybridized orbitals, and a pi bond here from the sideways overlap of a leftover 2p orbital from each carbon atom. Very nice. We also have a sigma bond here, sigma bond here, sigma bond here, and sigma bond here. But what mattered absolutely the most is that you can show the difference between the sigma bond, the first bond between the two carbons, and the pi bond. Very nice. You want to see this done even more complicated, look up C2H2ethyne when you have a triple bond. Spoiler alert, you have two of these 2p orbitals left over because you need two pi bonds. Congratulations on finishing the diagram with me, and best of luck.